I'm excited about today. We are currently in a series here at church called Because I Tithe, which might sound like something not really to get excited about, uh, but I have a deep conviction in my spirit and in my heart and in my mind about what freedom comes to God's people uh, when we can uh, get a holy perspective on this area of tithing. And, you know, tithing just simply means to bring the first 10% of all of God's blessings that he's given to us back to him. We typically do it in a cash or money economy now because most of us earn cash or money as our wages. We're kind of not bartering fruit and vegetables anymore, although I am always grateful for the vegetables I receive. Eve, uh, particularly from the Britain household. Oh, I got, oh, it's just such a beautiful um, little pack of fruit and veggies this past week. Anyway, back to the tithing. So um, we bring our first and our best, and it's an acknowledgement. It's the first 10% of everything that we earn and receive, uh, you know, all forms of income, to give back to God. It's an acknowledgement that everything that we have is from Him in the first place. But more than that, it's an acknowledgement that we are placing our trust for our security, our safety, our provision in the one God who is able to do above and beyond all we could hope, dream or imagine. Wow, that was a hectic paraphrase I just did then. But if you want to look up the real words, it was Ephesians 3.20, the Rachel Main version. So two weeks ago, I brought a message which was a lot of Bible and painted a picture of the story of tithing and God's, uh, uh, God's command for his people to tithe right throughout the narrative of scripture. So I'm not going to do that again today. And in fact, when I brought that message a couple of weeks ago, it was this message that I already had in my spirit and I was already so excited to be able to bring to you in just a couple of weeks. And today, the day has finally come. So today, the title of the message is Look at the Birds. And at the risk of sounding like an old lady, perhaps reminiscent of, oh yes, a lady from Mary Poppins, or perhaps Home Alone is another bird lady reference. At the risk of sounding like a lady who attracts birds, I have legit been attracting birds lately. I know. It's, str- it's strange. And I have found God speaking to me through watching birds over about the past year. Firstly, it was during our sabbatical last year. So, you know, Luke and I took a sabbatical last year. Those of you who've listened to our podcast series would have heard all the stories about the kookaburras, right? Yes, thank you. Somebody listened. And throughout that two-month period... God kept bringing kookaburras across my awareness. And it was at these every single time across those three months, I think there were four very specific occasions where I saw a kookaburra and I had not noticed kookaburras before. And every single time that a kookaburra came into my view, it was at the very time that my mind had been thinking about all these things that we were dreaming about for our future That's what the sabbatical was for. It was for dreaming about the next seven years of our productivity, the next seven years of our calling, of our ministry, of our family, of our marriage, all the things that we wanted to invest our time, energy and money into over the next seven years. And every time I started thinking, but how? And started worrying about God's provision for all these big dreams that I was dreaming, God brought a kookaburra right into my view. And then it might be a couple of weeks later and I'd be again, I'd be like, oh, I'm so excited, so inspired about all the things that God's telling me uh, are possible and all the things that he's putting in my heart and my mind about what we could do. But how, how is this all going to be provided for? Where are the resources going to come from? And every single time my mind went back to that thought, again, randomly, I would see a kookaburra right in front of my eyes. And I took it, the kookaburra wasn't speaking to me, it wasn't that weird. I took it as God telling me that I didn't need to worry. Fast forward to a year, fast forward a year, 
And uh, recently we were on holidays at that same time of year again. This year we weren't taking a full two months, unfortunately. We had two weeks. And uh, we were on holidays at one of our favourite places, Hawk's Nest, which is also birds like Hawk's Nest. It's a bird place. So I know there's all these dots that are joining. And um, I got up one morning, I think it was the very first morning we were there actually for a pre-sunrise run. And I have on my weather app on my phone have got an, like numerous places that remain open in my weather app that I can slide across because typically if I'm ever staying somewhere that's near the water I will get up early and go for a run because you know we live inland I don't get to run near the water here so I take advantage right and uh, I look at what time the sun is rising and the night before I devise you know a running route so that I can be at the beach or along the beach or near the water at the time because I'm typically on the east coast of Australia, at the time the sun pops above the horizon. Because, I mean, what a gift is that? I don't get to do that every day. So this first morning of holidays, I time it, I look at what time the sunrise is, I go for this run and I get to this beach right in time for seeing the sun rise above the horizon. And there's nobody there because Hawk's Nest, what we love about it is it's dead. It's like the oldest postcode in Australia. It is a place that people go to retire and not many of them. And so there's nobody there. And so I'm there at sunrise and I'm listening to my worship music. I'm having this holy time in the presence of the Lord, just worshipping, just enjoying this creation, this beautiful gift of being able to watch the sun appear above the horizon. And what I noticed on this deserted beach was these two birds. And they were swooping and ducking and diving and dipping. And they were so playful and they were so confident and they were playing a game where they kept going down into the waves and just dragging one wingtip along the water and then diving up again and then swooping down and dragging one wingtip in the water again and I was just so taken with the confidence and the playfulness of these birds that they were there also as part of God's creation enjoying the moment enjoying this creative experience that God made I'm getting so excited I'm spitting that God made for us all to enjoy and I'm there enjoying the sunrise and the birds are there enjoying the sunrise and it took me to a passage of scripture which you may know about which speaks about the birds and it speaks about how confident birds are in God's care and provision and that he's made them to not have a worry in the world and so this message is basically a one-point message about tithing because tithing means to demonstrate that we're all in in our relationship with God and that we're trusting him to provide and care for us by giving the first tenth of everything we earn as an offering to him. That's all tithing is. And so my one point message is basically this. Because I tithe, I'm confident. In our family, and this is kind of where this message series title has come from, in our family we have a saying and it's because I tithe. And, you know, we are trying to be intentional about teaching our kids, the next generation that we have care over, that there is a holiness, there is a supernatural power in this principle of tithing that God has set up for his people to follow, which means that we can walk through life with a confidence, particularly in the area of finance and our practical provision, the practical needs and resources that we have to get through this life. Because we tithe, we can be confident that God will do what he has promised he will do and he will provide for us. We've tried to teach our kids that they can be confident 
in God's best for them because we're a tithing family. And we make sure that we always point back to God as the reason for all of the many and numerous blessings and provisions that we have enjoyed as a family. So, you know, when big decisions go in our favour that really should not have, that don't make sense to either the bank or to us, we tell the story, it's because we tithe. When there's enough money left at the end of the week or at the end of the financial year and we've done all due diligence and, but it looked like on paper there shouldn't have been enough, we're able to tell the story that it's only because we tithe, that God is making up the gap because we tithe. When unexpected blessings and provision come to us or our kids in the form of gifts and other generosity from God's people, which happens often, by the way, we know it's because we tithe. And it's the story that we are telling in the next generation. And so watching the birds recently just playing and being completely carefree and confident in the provision of the God who created them reminded me that it was actually Jesus who spoke these words and told us to look at the birds. And he did it specifically when he was teaching his people about money, about how we look after money, how we receive money, how we give money, how we hold on to money, how we spend money, how we use money, how we pray for money. He gives us a lot of great advice. And this is where our passage about looking at the birds comes from. So we're going to dive into Matthew 6 uh, for today. Matthew 6 is a great chapter about money. If you want to get inspired about what Jesus says about money, it's a great sermon from Jesus himself himself about money and we're just going to use that as our text for today and uh and have a look at it at it in detail so we're going to start right now from verse 24 again in case you didn't get it this is jesus speaking he said no one can serve two masters for you will hate one and love the other you will be devoted to one and despise the other you cannot serve god and be enslaved to money. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are. And so if I were to break down why I'm confident because I tithe, one of the first reasons is right here. Because I tithe, I'm confident I am loved. Now hear me, God's love is not conditional on our decision of whether or not to tithe, okay? God's love is not conditional on our decision of whether or not to tithe. But the act and the sacrifice and the cost of tithing is something which keeps us very close to God. It forces us to keep relying on God. And it is in that closeness that we remember more often just how much we are loved by him. Jesus reminds us here in this passage that our value to him is far greater than that even of the beautiful birds we see flying around and enjoying creation. But he's also telling us that we can learn from those very birds a lesson about how much we are loved and how much God has considered our needs and planned to provide for us. And so Jesus goes on to say this in the very next part of the passage. He says, can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work and make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. 
And so if God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? And so the second reason that tithing makes me confident is because I tithe, I'm confident I'm called. You know, Jesus talks here about clothing, about what uh, the flowers and creation wears, what Solomon wore, and clothing. You know, he might not have been specifically talking about clothing as a mantle in this particular part of Scripture, but right throughout Scripture, clothing and the things that people wore and were given to wear, wear were a marker of calling. They were a marker of purpose, of destiny, of mission of assignment. If you think about Joseph and that technicolour coat that he was made to wear, it set him apart for the mission, purpose, destiny and calling that God had set before him. And in the same way, God has given you an assignment You're not here for no reason. God has given you a mission, a calling, a purpose, a destiny for your short time here on earth. And he's saying this act of tithing helps you keep close to me and it helps you keep aware of me and it helps you rely on me to keep clothing you in everything that you need to outwork and fulfill your unique life's calling. You've got one. And he's going to give you everything that you need to accomplish it. That's his promise. Finally, in Jesus' instruction to look at the birds, he gets to the crunch of what he knows is going to worry us. Right throughout history, in all ages and generations and times and places. Our worry has been the same. And he says this, So don't worry about these things, saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? And what will we wear? He knows. All throughout history, all of humanity will be saying these words, But what will I eat? What will I drink? What will I wear? We're asking him about the most basic of human needs and provisions that we have. And Jesus calls us to think a higher way. He says, these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. So seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously And he will give you everything you need. So don't worry. Don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Ain't that the truth? Today's trouble is enough for today. And so thirdly, because I tithe, I can be confident in God's timing. I mean, it's the eternal question, isn't it? But when, Lord God, when will you bring what I need? When will you show me the way? When? When will you show me what you've called me to do? When will you provide the resources? When will this dream become a reality? It's always been there, the question of God's timing. So last year, my first experience with a kookaburra Uh, I was in Noosa. Again, it was part of our sabbatical and um, uh, Luke and I each practice once a year uh, a discipline, if you like, where we take a few days away on our own to practice the spiritual disciplines of solitude and silence. And uh, last year I went to Noosa and I was, I go there because I love the beach, I love the bush tracks and um, I was thinking about, as I said, all these things that Um, I believed God had been placing on my heart about calling and about the future, but wondering how was this going to happen. And this kookaburra just came and sat on the path, on the fence of the path right beside me and just stared me down. And I just felt like it was God saying, 
you don't need to worry about that just yet. It's okay for you to hold the dream and not know the timing. So this year, I went back to Noosa again uh, just a couple of weeks ago and I was by myself and I went for a big long walk, no AirPods, just wanted to be alone with God and enjoy His creation and I was saying, speak to me, Lord. I went for this big, big, big long walk across multiple beaches and across the up, down, uh, down, down dales and well, however, whatever the saying is. And I was on about my 10th kilometre and um, I'm walking across this beautiful, again, deserted beach. The sun shining on the water and a little playful bird, of course, just playing in the, in the small waves that were lapping the shore. And um, I just had a time of worship with God. Because in all reality, you know, I'm passionate about tithing. This year, 2024, has been the most difficult year financially for our family since 2016. If you want to hear about 2016, listen to Luke's message from last week. That was our last kind of marker year that was a really challenging year financially. And um, it was the year that we turned our whole lives around and really got faithful, really got disciplined, really got consistent with our tithing, really just kind of opened up our hearts and said, well, God, you're going to have to move because our circumstances say we can't afford this. And uh, anyway, this year, with a few more years experience, I knew that, you know, stopping tithing was not the solution to my financial problems. And so we just chose to keep trusting God. And it's been a challenging year. And as I walked across that beach, I was praying to God and um, I just found myself thanking him, even for the hardship. I said, thank you, God, for these moments that we've had that have been so difficult, that have been so challenging. I said, I've learned to rely on you in a whole new way that I didn't know before this year. I've been able to teach my kids things about your goodness and your provision and your timing that I would never have been able to teach them if I hadn't lived through this year. And God, I'm still not sure what the timing is for your purposes and your plans, but I'm all in. I'm just so grateful for everything that you're doing in my life, in my marriage, in my family, in our church, in our community. You're just so good, God. And... Um, I just came away feeling so confident that every step has been ordered by the Lord. You know, Proverbs 16, 9 says, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps if we let him. You know, in the message, it says, we plan the way we want to live, but only God makes us able to live it. The passion, you want another one? It says, within your heart, you can make plans for the future. And I certainly have. But the Lord chooses the steps you take to get there. And you know, while I was on that beach, I'm completely confident that God refreshed my assignment and renewed my calling in a way I won't forget. It was a holy moment. And part of what he's called me to do is to help people who are in my sphere of influence, in my world, to get confident about his timing in their own lives. And this is part of my assignment, right? It's from, verse, it's from Isaiah 61. It says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted, and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. And so I'm completely confident that God has asked me to come here today and help set you free from any bondage that you've been carrying around about God's provision. Any worry that you've been carrying around about God's provision or God's calling, God's assignment, God's purpose, God's destiny. I've asked the team to minister to us. They're going to sing, but we're going to worship together. And, you know, the only reason that 
The only reason that I've got the authority to bring this message today is because it's a battle that I've had to face time and time and time again myself. I've had to get free of all my own hang-ups about whether God will actually provide. If I lay it all on the line, place all my trust in Him, will He actually prove Himself faithful and care for me? And so I'd love to invite you to respond. And, you know, as I was preparing for this week, I just really felt like, um, you know, everybody's welcome to come forward. There's something powerful that happens when you respond. Get up on your feet, come forward, be open and say, yeah, I want to get get a new layer of freedom in this area. Um, So everybody's welcome. But particularly, I felt like today was a great day for husbands and wives, the leaders of families to come and put a stake in the ground, step on the enemy's head and say, no more will you have any power over my thoughts. The Lord is my provider.